Everyone's a snowflake, I get that. The individual exists, but so do group averages. And I think most of us understand that. We can say girls tend to be shorter without saying that all girls are shorter than all boys. So in this video, I'm talking about group averages and explanation of variance. In the paper, Are Political Orientations Genetically Transmitted? Researchers John Alford, Carolyn Funk, and John Hibbing estimate, based on twin studies, that the heritability of political orientation, defined as opinions on 28 questions, questions is 0.43. Now the average for all 23 questions is only 0.32, but there is a clustering effect, meaning a person who is conservative or liberal on one issue tends to be conservative or liberal in general. If we take this study as accurate, we can say that about 43% of the variance in political opinion is down to genetic variance, 22% down to environmental variance um, or shared environmental variance, and 35% down to unshared environmental variance. Shared environment basically means home environment, uh, and unshared environment usually means environment outside the home. This isn't always true, but that's a useful way to think about it. The political consequences of this should be obvious. Political differences between people are simply intractable. When you see the fire in your opponent's eye on some issue uh, that, let's be honest, neither of you know anything about, like global warming, is it really about global warming? I suspect not. When the Bolsheviks took over the USSR, did everyone suddenly become a left-wing type person by temperament? No, the political neurology of the population was the same as it was under the czars. Now their expressed political opinion certainly went hard egalitarian and universalist and pro-collective economics, but once the USSR failed, these people who weren't genetically predisposed to communism went hard right, and now the biggest uh, national socialist movements are in Eastern Europe. Perhaps Lenin and Trotsky imagined that everyone in the Soviet Union with the right conditioning would become like them, when in reality you still had the equivalent of rednecks, you still had conservatives, it's just that the conservatives then uh, held nominally different views under the the Soviet Union. There is a good website called Neuropolitics, which despite having a persistent liberal bias, uh, does have a lot of good information on this stuff. Imagine that the United States didn't exist, and you were going to decide what to do with this area. Would you make a single country for all these different people who really um, don't get along at all? If you try to step outside yourself and look at the situation like a space alien would, I would imagine not. And this space alien, he has no knowledge of this great and glorious and wonderful America. How would he divide up this landmass? If we see our political opponents as something at least partially separated from us by genetics, we can be less judgmental about it. Something that a belief in a genetic role behavior, behavioral traits will lead to more oppression and more judgment and more condemnation. But I think the opposite is true. Uh, because let me ask you this. When a dog bites you or pees on you, uh, do you get mad at the dog? No, because that's just what dogs do. That's their genetics. But we get mad at other humans when they do this, because apparently humans have this volition thing. But what if they don't? At least not as much as we think. What if they don't? What if humans just have an ability to rationalize? And when you think you're taking down arguments, what you're really doing is just fighting through these rationalizations for what the animal wants to do. 